and Ted Keller, too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to you! Dog. Woof. Man's best friend. At least most of the time. And tonight's show is all about our fine furry friends. But first, some formalities. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. With me is my studious steward of stay-at-home skills, the single-mindedly snide Mr. Livingston. And making his work a good deal more difficult than necessary is the terminally troublesome yet treasurable treat, the tiny blushette known as Tangella. And have we assembled a most remarkable program for you tonight. First up, we'll be screening The Undying Monster from 1942. This is a fine American film tainted with a litany of extraordinary British thespians that revolves around the story of what appears to be a lycanthrope. Which, to those of you unfamiliar with the scientific terms for specific monsters, is the formal moniker for a wolf man. My P is a well-documented mental disorder where the patient believes he is a wolf. It has nothing at all to do with what is seen on these ridiculous films. Hmm. Tangella says that Napoleon likely exhibited a mental disorder called a Livingston complex. Moving onward. And to put a cherry on the top of our dog-themed evening, we'll be joined by Rascal the Ugliest Dog. Now, I've seen this puppy in person and must say that while he looks somewhat rather unusual, I did not find him ugly in the least bit. But the title still wins him awards and offers him roles on film and television, so there must be some peculiar truth to the claim. In any case, Rascal will be appearing with his pet human named Dane Andrew. He'll tell us about the adventures of this world-famous pooch. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of dog hair raising fright, right here on Creature Features! Mmm, these are good. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat. Making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Hello, Creature Feature friends! We just wanted to remind you that there are many methods to enjoy our dreaded little program. While most of you are likely watching from one of the numerous television stations that carry our show, and others are watching us on YouTube, there are other ways to watch as well. Frankly, I'm sure most of them have seen quite enough of this show. Shush! Some of you might already be aware that we have custom Creature Features apps for all the major set-top boxes. These are wonderful little devices that allow you to enjoy all kinds of free entertainment on your television set. We have an app for the Roku device, the Apple TV box, and for the wonderful Fire TV stick sold by Amazon. We've put a lot of work into developing these apps and we think you'll be surprised at what a wonderful method this is to watch our show. It's almost like watching Netflix but it's all creature features all the time. And the image quality of the playback is incredible. It's perfect, just the way we want you to see our episodes. So if you have one of these amazing devices, go into their app store and download the Creature Features app. And if you don't have one, consider getting one soon. You'll love it. You'll also make this one quite happy.
It's creature feature time. You know why it's creature feature time? Because we have an actual creature on the show. That is proof that it is creature feature time and we would not lie to you. Because we're joined by Dane, Andrew, and Rascal, which I think is the cutest dog in the world, though he holds the moniker for the ugliest dog in the world. What's he looking at? Yeah, Rascal, the ugliest dog. Uh, you know, he's in his own little world. Though, oh, he's just kind of... Kind of spacing out. You know, he's I he's think taking he should, in the mansion. He's like, I think he awesome. should have a, a little piano that he plays so he can do like the whole thing. Yep, exactly. That's wonderful. Anyways, uh, we're going to chat with Dane and with Rascal about uh, his, his fame and fortune. He's done a lot of things. He's been in movies. In horror movies. And music videos. Yeah. And contests. All kinds of that stuff. Has he done any dog treat commercials? No, he has not. He needs to do he a dog not. treat commercial, I that think. That would be good. That should be next on Rascal's itinerary. Anyways, and we're going to watch this film called The Undying Monster from 1942. It's a... You, you've seen it already. I saw it. It's a great film. It looks like Black it's and a white. good film. It looks... Right. Yeah, you know, fun, yeah, fun well, stuff. The, the copy we have is interesting. And uh, there's apparently a wolf man... So, like 1942 wasn't scary enough for the wartime. Now we I got know. The, the well, you know, here, I don't know if we were involved in the war yet because it was 1942. So, oh, we were in the war by then? All right. So, it was a, it, maybe it was the U.S. Army's secret weapon to make a wolf man and send <laughs> it off to Europe to fight the war. That would make sense. All right. Well, let's get this film started. You guys stay with me. You guys stay with me, and I'm stuck here for the rest of the night. Hammond Hall, at the turn of the century, when the age-old mystery of the Hammond monster was at last revealed to all England. That mystery, which although by 1900 had become a legend, was indeed a real tragedy and constant threat to the lives of all the seemingly doomed members of the House of Hammond. I beg your pardon, Miss Helga. I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, I must have fallen asleep. It's cold. Yes, it's a cold night, Miss Helga. I'll put on another log. Don't bother. It's 12 o'clock. I'm going to turn in. My brother come in yet? Not yet. He's very late. He and Dr. Colbert probably got to puttering about the laboratory and forgot the time. Don't worry. He'll be along directly. I was thinking those poachers might be up to their tricks on a night like this. Come on, Alex. Long past your bedtime. But Charlie Tadpole was saying down in the village he owed Mr. Oliver one for that bashing he gave him last week. What does he expect? Oliver caught him setting traps. Come on, Alex. Go on, old boy. <laughs> What's the matter 
with it. Sometimes dogs are smarter than folks. Oh, nonsense. He's just smart enough to prefer sleeping by the fire to the doghouse. Go on to bed now and behave yourself. Hurry up. How big and bright the stars look tonight. Aye, and there's frost on the ground, too. It was just such a night when some madness... So that's what's worrying you. Don't be silly, Walton. I only hope Mr. Oliver doesn't take the shortcut back. That pass by the edge of the cliff. Why shouldn't he? When stars are bright on a frosty night, Beware thy bane on the rocky lane. Surely you don't put any stock in that old legend. It's only 20 years ago since your grandfather was killed. Grandfather killed himself. After he'd seen it. That's ridiculous. There's nothing to that story about a monster. Oh, I shall never forget that night when I found your grandfather down there on that path by the edge of the cliff. After he'd met it, so horribly mangled, and that insane look on his face. That's absurd. A supernatural creature going about killing and sending its victims mad. People don't believe in that sort of thing nowadays. I'm sorry to worry you, Miss Helga, but I do wish Mr. Oliver were home. All right, if it'll ease your mind, I'll ring up and see if he's left yet. Would you please get me south down, 236? Hello? Hello, Helga. Oliver? No, he left not more than two minutes ago. Yes, he said he was going straight home. That's all right. Oh, I say, Helga, how about a ride in the morning? <laughs> no, that's not professional advice. It's purely social. Fine. About ten? All right, I'll see you then. Good night. He just left. That make you feel better? Thank you, miss. Good night, Walton. Good night, miss. It's probably a dog caught in a trap. That's no dog. Show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching the Undying Monster with. Dane Andrew and Rascal, the ugliest dog in the world. I, you know, I don't think Tangella agrees with that statement. No, she, she, this is like the most beautiful dog in well, the world. This She's is like Beauty seen. and the Beast right here. No, which one is which? Oh, I think everyone knows. You were Tangella just saying the that the, and the, the you beast were just is saying right the dog is not ugly, so, you know, it's one or the other, right? Yeah, he's actually won eight contests, though. So far, and he's current, current champion of two different ones. Ugly oh my dog goodness! Contest. So, what kind of what kind of winnings does a um, an ugly dog? Oh, sometimes win. they just give you food or right. you know gift certificate stuff, which right. he all donates to Animal Rescue. Big Good. supporter of That's everyone important. out there. Spay, neuter, take care of your pets. You know, they're right. you're right. kind of God to them. Right. And we need to do our part. You know, to help these shelters. 
So, so how, how did you get involved in, in doing these types of dogs? Way back when I was 11 in the 70s, I shouldn't, you know, I'm dating myself here, but I got one as a gift. I wanted a boxer puppy. My mom brings home this little, I have my eyes covered, I hear barking, and she brings home this little hairless thing and had stitches above its eye. And that was my first dog. I, what, I was so shocked. I'm like, what is it? It didn't have any hair. It looked like a little elephant. What, what was she thinking? I don't know. She knew I like unusual stuff. All but right. I fell, right. and fell in love with him immediately, and he went on to win uh, 14 different dog titles, eight world champion ones. And he's so in this was already records. going on back then. This is not like a new thing that you invented. Oh, no, no. I it was an no, established I didn't contest. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know anything about it until it had just started. And what's, somebody says, you need to go do this. What's that famous dog show they do in New York? What's that one Oh, called? the Westminster. Right. Yeah. Do, do they have an ugly dog category for Westminster? Dog you know, category for this? No, I don't believe they do. No. They're, they yeah, should. they're leaving out Rascal. What, where's the inclusion here? I know. <laughs> there, there must be like many. Could, everyone write in and say they need an so, ugly dog. So what breed is this? Is it an actual uh, breed? Yeah, no, he's an actual breed. Um, there's uh, Some people would say he's a chupacabra, depending where you come from. Oh, I or can a see that. Malaysian corpse nibbler. Is the actual breed name? <laughs> that, that's what no, he is, and what's, he actually is that in one of his, his films. What's his actual nomenclature? He's, they call him Turkish nakeds, African sand dogs, or uh, uh, Chinese Afri crested, more commonly known these days. African sand dog. Yeah. No, so I like that. That, makes, originated him, in that China makes him somewhere. sound vicious. He's yeah, an African he sand dog. Don't <laughs> mess with the African sand dog. He'll, he'll, he'll sting you with his venom. But he, is, he, is, he does go under... Uh, yeah, the corpse nibbler in one of his right. films, Curse right. of the Smoke O' Lantern. Corpse nibbler, that's wonderful. All right, well, we have not seen much happen in this film yet. We've only seen that it's a wonderful house that looks somewhat familiar, and uh, we've heard a howl. So uh, well, let's think, get back I, to this I, film. I think that was Rascal. No, that was not Rascal. Rascal has been silent. He's a good guest, unlike this man. <laughs> We're going to get back to the film, and uh, hopefully we're going to actually see a werewolf by this point. So don't go away. Stick around. We'll be back with Dane and Rascal and Tangela in a moment. Stick around. Miss Hammond, it's the monster killing Mr. Oliver, most like. Horrible it were, like a dog. Get a hold of yourself, Will. Sounds like a lost soul. All right. Let's find out what it is. You're not going down there. Tell Strelitz to bring the carriage round. Yes, Miss Strelitz, you've got two bays on. Very well. We'll have the gates open. Yes. Mrs. Walton, fetch me a coat. Don't stand there gaping as if you'd seen a ghost. But, Miss Helga, no Hammond ever ventures into the rocky lane on a frosty night. You've been doing your best to persuade me my brother's ventured down there. And if he has, I'm... Then I'll go with you. Thanks, Walton. But you better stay in mind the house. Yes, Miss. Tell Strelitz to bring the horses round to the front. Yes, Miss. And get me Oliver's revolver. Yes, Miss. Helga, please don't go out tonight. Don't worry, Mrs. Walton. I'm sure there's some rational explanation for all this, but if there is anything out there tonight, I'd like to get a crack at it, and I'm a jolly good shot. I'll drive them, Stradick. Get in. But Miss Elka. Come on, Alex. Good boy, Alex. Maybe you can help. Get in the back. <laughs> here somewhere, I'm sure. Miss Elga, won't you please go back? Give me a lantern. Yes, miss. Let me have the lantern. I'll go ahead. Oh. It was only a rabbit. Oh. 
is a bit scary down here. Oliver! 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 Alex! <laughs> Oliver's dog. His spaniel. Is he dead? Horribly. His whole body is twisted and his hind legs have been. Miss Elgin, now won't you go back? Not until I find my brother. Stand there like an hour. Go and get some brandy. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Let me get into bed. I found you in the lane on the cliff and brought you home. In the lane? But how did... I don't remember... Yes, I do remember. I was fighting the... The Beast Guard, Kate. Is she... She's still unconscious. We've done what we could for her. Must have gone for her after I fought it off. What... What was it, Oliver? I, I don't know. I didn't see anything. Well, Oliver, I'm glad to see you awake and talking. That's a good sign. How's Kate? Still in a coma. She may or may not come out of it. But there is a chance. Microscopic, but thanks to your quick action, still a chance. Well, you're a pretty good nurse, Helga. There's nothing left for me to do but a, a bit of tidying up. Hmm. Now, tell me, what happened exactly? I don't know exactly, Jeff. As I was leaving your house, I, I saw a glimmer of light on the pathway leading up to the cliff. So I went to investigate. I thought perhaps it might be somebody setting traps. You know, the Clagpools. But it was Kate O'Malley. She left a few minutes before I did, you remember. I offered to see her to the village, and... And suddenly I... I felt something coming at us from all sides at once. We heard it. Kate screamed and dropped the lantern. And I... And it, it, it closed in on me like... like a blast from a furnace. And it, it wasn't hot. It, it was... It was simply horrible. Kate screamed again, and then I was fighting it. Fighting it in a, in a darkness that, that went all, all red. All dark red, and, until a, a, a splash of fire split it up and put it out. That must have been when I, when I pitched on my head. And I woke in the, in the light and saw Helga. You poor darling. Helga, you're next. You're the only Hammond left besides me. 
If I die... Now, wait a minute, old chap. Who said anything about dying? The monster's never satisfied, Jeff. Unless it kills its victim or... Now, steady, Oliver. You mustn't excite yourself. You needn't talk as though I were a scared kid or a lunatic. I tell you, there's something horrible out there. Unless we destroy it, it'll destroy us. Both of us. Please try to put it out of your mind now, darling. Get some sleep. Here, drink this. Make you feel better. Poor darling. It must have been a shock for you, finding them like that. It was awful. I can't help feeling that I'm somehow to blame, about Kate at least. She'd been working late and I should have seen her home, I suppose. But it's hardly a stone's throw to the village through the shortcut past your place. Jeff! There's something beyond all this that, that frightens me. What is it? What is this thing that's been hanging over us for years? The village folk will insist that the Hammond monster has returned. But you don't believe in that superstitious rot, do you? Usually some basis for this sort of thing. How badly is Oliver hurt? His wounds are deep but not serious. Fortunately, he's got excellent recuperative powers. What about his mind? Seems unaffected. Most anybody might be liable to forget exactly what happened after a blow like that on the head. Haven't you any idea what sort of a creature made the wounds? Oliver and Kate are badly mauled, but there's no distinctive mark to indicate exactly what attacked them. It could have been a ferocious dog, of course. Those poachers have a couple of huge vicious hounds. Now, look here, darling. Why don't you forget about this tonight and try to get some sleep? I'll run along. I'm sure by tomorrow the police will find out what it was. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Dane and Rascal, the world's cutest dog, had to step out for a moment. Do you know what they're doing? Grooming. Now, I think Rascal had to go to the loo, or in this case, a tree, to go take care of some business. But that gives us an opportunity to do some mail, correct? Correct. You send us things in the post, and we have to look and read it, because it's important that we do that. Right? In indeed. How are you doing, Tangela? Good. She's so happy that she loves dogs. All kinds of dogs. Ugly ones, pretty ones, doesn't matter. You got mail? Come on, yeah. bring it, bring it, bring it. What is it? Mr. Trumpeter. We've heard from him before. I believe we have. He's, he, does he have an exclusive access to our mail bag? Oh, I, I recall. I recall. This is, this is what he hand wrote the note. And I looked and I said, I will never be able to read this. You must print it. So one of our poor staffers had to decipher. And it looked like he was decoding the Enigma machine from World War II. Ah. No, it was amazing. All right. So um, Robert Trompeter says, hello, Creature Features. Thank you for reading my letter on the air on 4-24-21 at 9.45 p.m. This man has a military background. I'm surprised he did not use military time. Vince, you said my name perfectly. It's been a very weird week for me, and that was uplifting. My name is pronounced 
Trompeta. It's bohemian and somewhat related to Captain Horatio Hornblower. We know him. Not personally. Well, we know of him. Indeed. The 50s made some of the best sci-fi and horror films. The film quality you present the films at is really excellent, especially all the Roger Corman ones. I collect really early film and found early Thomas Edison 1897 products. Wow, that's, that's some old stuff. Impressive. I'm a very avid film buff and make films myself as well and teach film production and theory. I made a film in 1988, Goomers. Uh, Goomers. It's like groomers without the R. About creators that arise from fruit. I did props and production assistance for Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Had, a, had to roll a large tomato down the sidewalks in Milpitas. I didn't know that was filmed down there. I had no Milpitas idea. Milpitas is becoming the monster capital of the world in the San Francisco Bay Area, I presume. Really enjoy Creature Features program. Can I get a signed picture of the cast, please? Well, I think he can arrange that. We'll have to check with him. Thank you for writing, Robert, and we will talk to you soon. What do you got next for me, Mr. Livingston? A package. A heavy package? Somewhat. A somewhat heavy package. It feels like it's been shaking already. Is this something stirred. for you? No? It's not for you? Is it for me? It cannot be for me. Who's it addressed to? Creature Features from Pulp Vane. Is that person's name? I don't think so. Pulp there is Vane. a note inside. Oh my goodness. What, in God's name, somebody sent their entire video collection? Is this what this is? All right. I better read the notes and find out what's going on. You know, we don't... They don't let me look at this before. They just show me a note and say, can you read this? And I say, no. But this I could read. All right. Um, Brian Lupo. Does not say where, but it said someplace up north, right? Redlands, California. All right. He goes, hey, Creature Features crew, just dropping you a small letter to say I love the show. Between Joe Bob Briggs on Friday nights, Sven Gulli on Saturday, and your show on YouTube for Sunday. He's watching us on bloody Sunday. Now, he gives Joe Bob Briggs and Sven Gulli the weekend, and he saves us for Sunday. It's yeah, a spread that's, letter day. That's the day of our Lord. You should not be watching horror films on Sunday. Now, you can watch us any time you want. That's why you're on YouTube and those other two blokes are not, because we're versatile. You can watch us any day of the week, right? Indeed. That's right. All right. Uh, uh, you on uh, Sunday night viewing. My weekends are full of horror hosts of terror. I grew up watching Elvira. Zachary, Count Gordevall, Joe Bob Briggs. You already said Joe Bob Briggs. And, uh, of course, the legendary Bob Wilkins of Creature Features. As a horror junkie, it's nice to see the home of the horror host is still very much relevant and thriving in our faster-paced era. My goodness, this man has a way with words. Indeed. Got to put some commas in so I can inhale now and then. All right, I want you to know us OG mutants. You know, I just found out that OG means original gangster. I don't know how that applies to anything else except gangster films. Original gangster. All right, I want you to know us OG mutants are spreading the word of your channel and wish your show the best of luck, as I do all horror hosts with hearts in the right grave. I've seen your show evolve from episode one. Oh, good Lord. That's a, that was a beauty. Mm-hmm and uh, see a beautifully dark future ahead for the show. If you can please play the film Duel, that would be epic. You know, we tried to get that. No luck. We'll keep trying, though. I know you have to pick from public domain titles, not always, and put them on YouTube. So my request might be impossible. But thank you either way for your consideration. And close with some gifts for you, Vincent, Livingston, and Tangela. Best from your subscribed and bell notified fan, Brian Lupo. P.S. Is Tangela's octopus obsession Chaluthu? How do you say this? Chaluthu? Chaluthu. Chaluthu related. Is it? Now, you know, she likes octopi because it is the animal that looks most like her hair, and she lives by the ocean. And that's all it is. All right, let's see what kinds of gifts he gave us. My goodness. The sickness of. Lucius Frost, a Brian Lupo film, three copies. Look at this. Mon, is this another Brian Lupo film? Good Lord, this man's a filmmaker. He did not say so. All right, look at all these films. 
you know, you should just send us a release with these so we can show them on the air if they're any good. Ken Teller will let us know if they're very good. All right, look at all this stuff. And he wrote a book. Oh, he, he wrote a book about goats called Goat's Head. Oh, she loves goats. She loves her heads too, but she loves goats. She loves the entire goat. All right, well, thank you so much, uh, Brian. And uh, we will uh, take a, a look at these ASAP, right? Is that it? Anything else? One more. One more. I feel like it's Christmas. Here you go, love. All right, last letter is from Ted Beaker in Slurry Creek, Arkansas. That sounds like a beautiful place. Slurry? Do you know what a slurry is? No. Oh. Well, it's not a slur. Is it? No. All right. Uh, Dear Creature Features, I like your show. I also like dirt, vermin, and I put a cheese slice on my apple pie. That is all goodbye. Ted Beaker, Slurry Creek, Arkansas. That's a strange letter. Well, I hope you're doing fine, Ted. And if you could, next time you write, explain this whole cheese on apple pie. You know, I've seen that once before, and I never it's did quite... It's Dutch. Is it Dutch? Dutch apple pie. Is Beaker a Dutch name? It could be. Sounds like it. Or oh, it's German like him. All right, well, that's it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter of your own via email, like Mr. Beaker did, send it to the address you see right here. Or if you'd like to send a box full of books and DVDs and a very long letter, like our friend Mr. Lupo, send it to the address you see right here. We'll be right back with Dane Andrew and Rascal the Ugliest Dog. But first, let's get back to the Undying Monster. I've done it, Bob. It works. Really? This must be our lucky day. These tests turned out well, too. My dear boy, all London knows that you solved the Kensington murder with your scientific test when everything else had failed, but nobody's been able to do what I've done. And what complicated formula, Christy, have you proved? Here, taste it. Oh, no, thanks. Oh, it won't hurt you. Oh, hello, Inspector. Uh -huh. I was about to come up and see you. We collated the final runoff test on those bullets. They were all fired from the same revolver. Inspector Craig, have a piece. What is it? Toffee, a new recipe. Don't tell me that you've been using our laboratory equipment to make toffee. Don't mind if I do. Don't touch it. Mr. Curtis, you may not think much of female detectives, but really, it's simply delicious. The best I've ever made. Your pan... You use that pan? Well, why not? If making toffee isn't scientific. But that's the pan that I use for the hydrophobia culture, and it turned out positive. Hydrophobia... Hydrophobia... Oh! Oh! <laughs> That'll fix her. Here, Inspector, help yourself. No, thank you. She'll have her stomach pumped. It serves her right. She's a good detective, but she gets restless unless something's happening that makes her blood run cold. You know, her prime passion is dabbling in the occult. Maybe the Hammond case would interest her. What's up, Inspector? Nothing tangible yet, but I'd appreciate it if you'd look into it. You might solve something there with these gadgets of yours that's baffled us for a long time. If those are orders, Inspector, I'm ready. Christy and I could do with a weekend in the country. I think it'll take longer than a weekend. And it might turn out to be rather dangerous. Well, if you're thinking about Christy, don't worry. She thrives on goose pimples. Don't laugh at me, Bob. But I sometimes think that there are some things that can't be explained in the ordinary way. And I want to warn you. You'll best be prepared to cope with something perhaps supernatural. <laughs> oh, but Inspector Craig... I know what you're going to say. There's no such thing that from the viewpoint of science, all phenomena have a material basis. I've never yet met a case of ghostly interference that wouldn't stand investigation. That's why you're the man for the job. Miss Hammond is waiting in your office, sir. Coming. Here, read the report of the case and then come up. I want you and Christy to look the Hammond girl over. Right. And that's all there was to it, Inspector. Yes, yes, of course. You must forgive me for asking you up to London. Naturally, but there's nothing more I can add that you don't already know. You're sure there's nothing else you want to tell me? Ah, oh, may I present Mr. Robert Curtis, Chief of our laboratory staff, and his assistant, Miss Cornelia Christopher. 
This is Miss Hammond. How do you do? How do you, do? you don't look like the sort of girl who'd be mixed up in any trouble like this. He said precisely the same thing to Miss Coulter, the sashweight murderess, before he sent her to the gallows. Christy! Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. I didn't mean to shock you. That's just my clumsy way of assuring you that we'll find the murderer. But there's been no murder. No murder? Then what am I doing here? My dear Miss Christopher, the Hammond case has been in our files for a long time. I knew your grandfather well. He was a brave and gallant soldier. I hardly remember him. I was only a child when he... Yes, yes, I know, my dear. It's always been hard for me to believe that such a fine man could kill himself. Unless he had a very good reason. Miss Hammond, Scotland Yard has no desire to pry into people's private lives. But we'd hope that you'd tell us about the... Well, the monster. A monster? Now we're getting somewhere. There's no such thing. But there is a legend. Yes. To the effect that centuries ago, one of your ancestors sold his soul to the devil and still lives in a secret room in Hammond Hall, issuing forth at intervals to make the sacrifice of a human life in order to prolong his own. I didn't think you knew the story. I'm sorry, Miss Hammond, to have to bring a matter which I know must be painful to you out into the open. But we've but... done nothing to merit having our name dragged through a newspaper scandal. We'll keep the investigation strictly undercover. Then there is to be an investigation. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about it. That's official. Very well, then. I'll help you all I can. Oh, that's odd. We were thinking we were going to help you. Thank you, but I'm sure I can take care of myself. When should we expect you? Oh, but we're moving in with you. And I warn you, I've got an appetite like a horse. What a divinely gloomy old house. Just the sort of place a reliable ghost would haunt. It's one of the oldest inhabited houses in England. We're coming to the shortcut. Should we stop? Right. I'd like to have a preliminary look around. Come along, Christy? No, if you don't mind. It's much too early in the day to tax my poor brain. Dear, dear, run me up to the hall, will you? Delighted. Do you think it's wise Helga to go down there? After last night, I mean. Oh, don't worry. When Bobby gets on the trail of a ghost, its haunting days are practically over. Toodle do. See you done if not before. Golly, I'm famished. I do hope that bloodthirsty spook hasn't raided the pantry. <laughs> Oliver! Hello, Helga. I say, Olga, don't look so startled. I'm all right. I woke before the scheduled time, and even Jeff had to admit there was no necessity for my staying in bed. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my brother, Oliver. Mr. Curtis from Scotland Yard. Glad to see you, Mr. Curtis. Oh, it's a bit late to do anything for poor Kate. She's... No, she's alive, but still in a coma. Even if we find the answer to this, it won't help her much, I'm afraid. I see the local police are already on the job. Yes, they just got here. Not even the constable would venture out in these parts until broad daylight. I tell you, it was those clad fools. No, no, Warren, we can't jump to conclusions. We haven't found any tracks. Neither of them nor their dogs. Constable, this is Mr. Curtis. Oh, Mr. Curtis. I've been expecting you, sir. Well, I got your wire, sir. Now, nothing's been disturbed. Interesting case you have here, Constable. I wouldn't exactly say that interesting's the word, sir. And what about those poachers, Constable? Well, it could have been them, of course. But... I'm afraid we're dealing with something more serious than a couple of poachers. Have you examined the spaniel? We have that, sir. No teeth marks or other clues as to the nature of what attacked him, I suppose. No, sir. Strange he didn't warn you of the approach of your assailant. I know it sounds fantastic, but is there a possibility he didn't see it? Well, even a supernatural being would have to take on material form in order to inflict such serious injuries. Well, I think perhaps we can find an explanation for all this without calling in spooks. Could you tear a dog that size to pieces, Constable? Well, perhaps not. Two men could between them. Or perhaps a large animal. Well, I might say yes, but nothing that size has passed through here lately. Now, anything big enough to do a thing like this would have to leave tracks. Oh, not necessarily. How about a big monkey? I suppose you've checked up to find out if one has escaped anywhere. There's no shows in the vicinity, sir. There's a zoo about eight miles from here. A monkey seems a likely notion. It's a possibility, of course. Shall I check up on it, sir? Can't do any harm. Right, sir. Who's that fellow in the velveteens? That's Warren, Kate's fiancé. They were to have been married. Poor fellow is all broken up. You don't really believe that ape theory. No, but it'll give them something to play around with. Then they won't have time to worry about me. You have any theory at all? It's too early to form an opinion yet, but we have to figure on something with almost superhuman strength. It tears with grasping paws and bites ferociously. Whose approach even a dog can't sense. It comes and goes, heaven knows how, without leaving any tracks. Find anything? Nothing of any importance.
portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. So, uh, Dane, who does your dog's hair? <laughs> I no. think must have a familiar hairstyle. As no, I think, I think uh, you know, there, there's some commonality. There's some simpatico that could occur if I could meet I'm, the stylist. I'm thinking either you should go white or he should go black. No, you know, I bet if I participated within a, a ugly dog contest, I might win. Uh-oh, you hear that rascal See? or is no, she agrees. some competition? No, whenever, she's agree, competition. whenever she agrees, I'm usually right. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, welcome back to the show. We, uh, if you're just joining us, you're tardy, but we'll forgive you this time. Uh, you are missing out on The Undying Monster, a film from 1942, which is starting to get a bit better. And our guests, Dane Andrew and Rascal, the most humorous dog in the world. I'm not going to call him ugly. Now, she scolded me. I, you know, I called him ugly at the commencement, and she did not. She made me eat a dog biscuit. Oh, those are good. No, they was not bad at all. I, I you actually got a treat. liked it. So we were talking about previously how you got into the whole ugly dog thing, but uh, you told me at the break that you had a keen interest in creature features back when Bob Wilkins was at the I helm. Started watching it. When I was a kid, it was, what, 50 years ago, I guess. Wow. And, uh, right. and my mom said, don't watch that stuff. You know, my dad loved the horror stuff. Right. Oh, he'll be fine. Oh, let him watch that stuff. He's going to be scared of nightmares. Well, that Your father said no. No, he said yes. Right. And she's like, no, no, no. We, no. we, we get letters like then this he, often. It's, it's often the case where the mother says, no, he's going to have nightmares. Don't let him watch. And the father is like, come here, kid. <laughs> Right, no, it's, it's, a, it's a common thing. But no, it really, it influenced my life, changed my life. It, it, they had Ray Harryhausen and Leonard Nimoy, all these wonderful interviews, right. Roger Corman interviews, and I said, I want to do that. I was mesmerized as a little kid watching this, one so, of the interviews. besides having amazing looking, interesting dogs, how did it affect you otherwise? Um, the creature features right. itself, I, by watching these films of what these guys had pulled off, I was like, I want to be part of that. I thought it was so amazing. And it made a difference that there was guests. It wasn't just watching a movie. Right. It was that there was actual guests, just like we're doing now. And this is, this and you is see amazing. people talking about that. And then I got to meet Bob Wilkins as a kid right, right after that a number of times and then through the years. And luckily, I got, thankfully, I got to tell him that he made a difference in my life. And, you know, he's heard that. He heard that many, many times. He's a nice guy. No, yeah. no, no. You know, still, our yeah, director Tom me. has all the mail that he received. Bob gave him all the mail he received over the years, and it's all letters like this wow. that says, "Oh, you, you cannot believe what you've done for me." And he, he still looks surprised when I told him. He's right. just like, right. like he'd never heard yeah. that before yeah. or something. Loved, like, wow, I can't viewers. believe it. So you did a film that we showed. Tell a zombie. Tell a I zombie. And you know, we zombie. get we get nice comments on that film all the time oh, on well, YouTube. Well, to show it again. No, we should. We should. Maybe Got maybe they're going to come out with there. a Blu-ray version. There we go. And this dog is in it. There we go. Tur turns from regular dog, drinks the green elixir, and turns into the killer dog. And he becomes the yeah, killer and dog. It, and it, and it, you're um, like the main... I'm the main star of it. That's, and then uh, supporting actress is the horror screen right. queen, Brink Stevens. Right. So, yeah, I think right. we... So we next time we show, we have to make sure you're here and he's here, and it will 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 make a festival out of it. That it, would be great. No, it'll be it'll be like a special thing, right? It was, it was like kind of a tribute on, to those old 50s on a movies. special episode of Creature. I'd we have not that. done a special ep episode of Creature Features, have we? No, we do the Halloween thing now and then, but uh, we rarely have a, a very special episode of Creature Sounds Features. Sounds great. All right, what do you say we get back to this film? Let's do it. I want to see this, this wolf creature. Hopefully, we're going to see something soon. All right, off we go. Back to the undying monster. Don't go away. When we come back, we're going to learn more about Rascal the dog, and Tangela is going to see if she could train him to do a trick. See you soon. Mr. Curtis and Miss Christopher will be stopping with us a few days, Walt. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, my 
my dear, I do hope you will forgive me, but I prevail upon your butler to serve luncheon in here. So much cosier than that enormous, gloomy dining room. I'm glad you did. Far feels good after that fog. Miss Christopher, I want you to meet my brother Oliver. How do you do, Miss Christopher? Why, you poor dear boy. What a ghastly experience that must have been for you last night. Oh, well, come and sit by me and tell me all about it. You know, I'm awfully rude, not waiting for you. But lunch you come for once a day, and I thought it was a pity to spoil it. I could do with a couple of those pork sausages myself. I always make it a practice never to hunt down ghosts on an empty stomach. You know, my dear, ghosts don't like nice warm rooms. And there doesn't seem any point in tempting that spook of yours to barge in on us while we're eating. Don't tell me you've already decided it's here in the house. Well, you can laugh if you want to. But there's something here. Something strange. Very strange. I can feel it. I should have warned you. Miss Christopher suffers from an overdeveloped supercalifagellus. A supercola what? Feminine instinct. What was that? Door slamming, I imagine. Wind's come up. I thought I heard someone scream. It's probably Millie, the new maid. Her hair's been standing on end ever since last night. Maybe you'd better go and see Mrs. Walton. Yes, sir. Millie! Oh! What's the matter with you? The monster! It's here in the house. Are you out of your mind? I tell you, it's here in there. It slammed the door right in my face. Be quiet. You don't know what you're saying. There's nothing in there? Mr. Oliver didn't see nothing last night either. I tell you, there's something in there. Even if the rain... Whoever was that? Clanking chains. What did I tell you? Seems to be coming from the direction of a the crypt. There's a crypt in the house? Yes, down in the cellar. Sir Magnus is buried there. Let's have a look around. It's splendid. Maybe we'll catch the ghost for the shroud down. seems to be resting in peace. By daylight, at least. Who's the crusader? Sir Reginald Hammond. He lived in King Richard's time. Was killed in Palestine. Is that supposed to be the monster? I told you, there isn't any monster. If that's a left dog, I'm a canary bird. Can you make anything of it? It might be meant for anything on four feet. People have always bred the dog into fantastic shapes. But that's no canine tail, those round paws. Hmm, it's rather curious. Who's this beautiful specimen of manhood? Sir Oliver. Now, well, why would such a handsome man want to kill himself? It's a sort of junior Westminster Abbey, isn't it? Yes, Miss Christopher. It's been the family burying place for 500 years. Oh, Miss Hammond. You admitted that there was a legend in the family. Why not trot it out so we can all have a look at it? I've told you everything I know. Well, you didn't tell us about all these ancestors of yours who were killed by this so-called monster, or who killed themselves after meeting it. Why do you insist on hiding? Now, look here, old man. Is there by any chance a reason why you don't want this brought out in the open, Dr. Coleman? Certainly not. I'm only thinking of Helga. She's had enough to worry her since the other night, and I see no point in upsetting her unnecessarily. It's all right, Jeff. I'm sorry, Miss Hammond. I don't mean to distress you, exactly but... Exactly what is it you want to know, Mr. Curtis? Well, for one thing, what about this chap who sold his soul to the devil and is said to live in the secret room? That's nonsense. There is a secret room but in the cellar. But there's nothing in it. How do you know? I've been in it. Lately? I say, Curtis, this isn't a court of law, you know. The room's been untouched for centuries. We finally locked it up several years ago. Mind if I have a look at it? Not at all. The key right here. Come along. Coming, Curtis? Right. They're going to the secret room. Christopher woman suspects something. 
They won't find anything. We shall see to it that they don't. Shh! Would you add another crime to all the others? There are some things it's better not to know about. What are you doing here? You rascal, you scared us. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's someone here. Someone besides us. Thornton! What are you doing here? I beg your pardon, sir. I didn't mean to startle you. I was on my way to the cellar to get some wine for dinner. I wish you'd stop sneaking up on people like that. Can't you cough or sneeze or do something, let a person know you're about? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. It's just an excuse to keep an eye on me. Probably expects me to go out and hang myself at any moment. Oliver! Don't worry, darling. I'm much too fond of this old earth. Creepy sort of a chap, that Walton. He may seem odd to you, but he's really a very kind, fatherly person. Has he been with the family long? Oh, ever since I can remember. He seems to have something on his mind. It's here. Uh-oh. There goes that old supercalifragilis again. Be quiet. Don't move. Something out of the ordinary. Something very strange. Nonsense. It's no ghost. Or the dog would have noticed. Your dog didn't notice anything last night either, did he? That's right. Hmm, that's odd. I'd say that it rather neatly disposes of the supernatural. It does, Doctor? I'd say so. Well, that seems to settle it. When stars are bright on a frosty night, Wear thy bane in the rocky lane. Oh, pretty little ditty. Someone ought to set it to music. Sounds like a pretty definite warning to me. Yet you ignored it last night. To tell you the truth, I never took it very seriously. Seems rather like flying in the face of fate in view of what happened to your ancestors. Superstitious rot. Well, superstitions are often based on fact. If you want to know more about it, there's a family history in the library. Thanks. I'll have a look at it. <laughs> How long did you say it was since anyone has been in this room? Three or four years, at least. You're sure? I have the only key. And you haven't been here recently? Not since Helga and I came here about three years ago, and... When what? We decided to lock up the room for good. Why? For the simple reason we never used it. I see, and you haven't been here since. Frankly, Mr. Curtis, I don't see the necessity for this cross-examining. If Helga and Oliver say that... Somebody's been in this room within the last 24 hours. Those are pretty hefty footprints for a ghost. I told you there wasn't a ghost. Anybody could have made them. Why, they could be mine if I'd had a key to get in here. But let's see if they fit, huh? Oh, I'd say I am a clumsy ox. Unfortunate, Doctor, that you had to pick this particular moment in which to lose your balance. The last time I lost mine, I had one too many. Well, I'm terribly sorry, old man. Why don't you send this fellow Curtis packing? One doesn't send a Scotland Yard man packing, Jeff. You needn't submit to this sort of thing, you know, this cross-examination. We still have laws that protect a person's privacy. You don't like him, do you? I'm afraid I don't. Look, Jeff, you deliberately smeared those footprints. Why did you do that? Don't you realize they might have been anybody's? Mine, Walton's, Oliver's? Why should we let this detective involve innocent people in an investigation that's entirely uncalled for? Mr. Curtis is trying to help us. And if we can help him, we... Oh, Miss Hammond! I'll run upstairs. I want to look in on Kate. He's pretty fond of you, isn't he? Dr. Kovitz, one of my best friends. That undoubtedly accounts for his aversion to me. Do you always analyze everything, Mr. Curtis? Miss Hammond, if your brother were killed last night, you'd have become sole heir to the estate, wouldn't you? Why, well, I suppose so. Why? Then someone who knew this legend of the monster might have used it to get rid of your brother. I'm 
afraid I don't follow you. With Oliver out of the way, your husband, if you had one, would control the estate. You mean Jeff? That's absurd. Perhaps. But why should a man of his ability bury himself way up here in this little village, instead of practicing in London where he belongs? Maybe you better ask him that. Hi, my name is Holly. I grew up on the peninsula. Uh, we went to Bodega Bay right after they filmed The Birds, and it was really cool. Really cool that you guys are filming from there. I love Creature Features. Loved it when I was a kid. Love it now. Have a great day, and everything is really wonderful about your show. Thanks. Bye. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have a desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching The Undying Monster. You know, this film, Dane, has lots of uh, similarities between uh, their home and our home, including the slamming door. See? Now, these things happen here. Yeah, we say, oh, look, it's a ghost in the movie, and all of a sudden a ghost appears here. It's, it's, you know, that's why we don't show Godzilla films. No, the terrible <laughs> Godzilla, it, one is, foot. Is there a ghost of Godzilla? You know, I don't know, but it would not be necessary because he would just like show up and, you know, we're so close to the ocean. He has like. I can hear it. Yeah, can no, hear it it's here. commute, it's commute. All right, anyways, uh, if you're just joining us, Dane owns this wonderful pooch named Rascal, and he's, he's actually a, a thespian, he's an actor. He is. He's been in lots he of things. Is. Tell us about some of the things he's done. Um. Not too long ago, we, we got off doing America's Got Talent, where we set the record for the most worn dog outfits in the first ever doggy strip show. Oh, my goodness. And he's got a couple other things coming up. He's met lots of famous people, which is really fun. He's Tell just, me five. George, George Decay. Just, George De Mr. He, he loved him. He met he Mr. Thought it was Sulu? Space dog. He, yeah, and, and Genie. I, I have not Eden. even met Mr. Sulu. And Genie? He loves, he loves Genie? all of them. Oh my goodness! I, He's you know, met just amazing, yeah, amazing amounts of actors. Everyone they come up and ask, they can have photos with him. And oh, of just, course. I'm glad he takes me with him. Well, that's he needs no, a, he that's, needs a that's driver, wonderful. I guess. That's wonderful. But he was in um, a music video. The music video, "You Bring Me Luck" by and Athena. We're, we're going to show some of that over us it's speaking. A, it's a it's a wonderful uh, music video. It's not just it's not just fun because he's he's a star of it. Um, but the music's really good. That's right. what and that's a local want to do it. Local star of some kind, or is that? Um, she's an international star. Oh. Started in Greece and then My London, goodness. and now she's in L.A. And she actually insisted that he would be in it. Called me when I heard oh, the music. How wonderful! I thought, I, yeah, I want to be part of this. This is amazing. So they just ring you. They say, "Oh, we need an ugly dog." And they say, "Oh, we're going to call Dane because Dane has an ugly dog, and we want to put Dane's ugly dog." Yeah, I don't think he's that ugly. 
Oh, you know what? He's my handsome boy. He is a handsome boy. We have fun boy. with it. And, you know, we have fun with like, it, but he ten, is my handsome boy. I don't, you know, I don't look at him as ugly. He's, no, he's and amazing. you know, I bet most people, oh, you know, I looked at some of the videos that uh, he was in the contest and nobody ever calls him ugly. They always say he's yeah, pretty he's and handsome. But no one's so. quite sure what he is. When they first see him, they say, what is that? Maybe like a mini pony or a space alien or They don't something. think he's a dog. They're not sure, yeah, especially well, when he doesn't move. And then well, they he's, tell he's him stuff. you know, he's he's mostly, you know, he's not like a chihuahua, which is usually anger and tremble. He just has tremble. He's a lot. No anger. It's a friendly dog. I could attest, and so can Tangela, right, Tangela? He's and he is naturally dog. hairless. So, no hair. music videos, and what about, like, commercials? Has he ever done an uh, No, no commercials. No, you know, I think he should do a commercial for Alpo. He's, he's no. willing and what donate, the, donate one, the money in Animal Rescue. What was the Chuck Train? What was it called? Oh, what, Chuck yeah, Wagon. The, is that still around? I remember that. No, Chuck they Wagon. They chase it into the wall. Exactly. No, he could do that a Chuck a Wagon one. commercial and you could get him a little cowboy hat and like spurs. <laughs> No, we should, we should, we should, we should consolidate and come up with some ideas. We'll brainstorm. All right. Well, I'm getting the signal. We got to get back to this film, but uh, when, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk some more about what you do and what we do and uh, what this movie is all about. So uh, we will see you soon on the other side of the break. Don't go away. Bye. Oh, Doctor, mm -hmm. I wanted to get that book Mr. Hammond mentioned. Do you happen to know where it is? Why, yes, in this bookcase, I believe. Hmm, that's curious. Used to be right here. I've seen it often. Looks like somebody else is interested in the history of the Hammond family, eh? I may be mistaken. I thought it was there. Perhaps you better look around. Or perhaps that's just one more thing I'm not supposed to know about. I remember now. You practiced in London a couple of years ago. Specialized in nervous diseases. Yes, that's it. You're a brain specialist. I've had some little success in that line, yes. Why did you leave London? Now, look here. I resent your attitude. My affairs happen to be my own business. Now, thank you to bear that in mind. Sorry, Doctor. But whether you believe it or not, I'm trying to help Miss Hammond and her brother. And I have a feeling they'll need help. The best way you can help them is to go back to London. Doctor Covert, I'll make a deal with you. You tell me frankly what you know about all this, and I'll drop out. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Have you any objection to telling me where you were last night? I was in my laboratory. I see. I talked with Helga on the telephone not two minutes before. That's true, Mr. Curtis. Are you positive it was only two minutes, Miss Hammond? Things happened pretty thick and fast about that time, you know. You could have miscalculated. Walton was right in the room with me. He'll verify it. I expect he would. Dr. Cobbett, Dr. Cobbett, come quick. It's Miss Kate. <laughs> Girl's dying? I'm afraid so, sir. Mr. Curtis, there's one thing I feel you ought to know. Yes? The other night, Mr. Oliver and Miss Kate were mauled and scratched as if by some wild beast. That wasn't everything. Go on. You know that Miss Kate hasn't come out of it. But she isn't just unconscious. It's as if she was, well, paralyzed or drugged. Dr. Cover tell you this? No. I could tell by the look of her. I know about such things. But if you don't mind, sir, I'd rather you didn't tell anyone. I won't unless I have to, Mrs. Walton. And thanks. From all I can gather about this wretched spook, you're not going to find it under that glass. I'm not sure this wretched spook, as you call it, was responsible for what happened. Neither am I. What about that doctor? He smeared up those footprints deliberately, didn't he? Don't tell me you had to rely on your feminine instinct to arrive at that brilliant conclusion. Mm, he knows more about all this than he's telling. That's the trouble. They all do. The girl, too? All of them. Oh, dear. And here at last I thought you were casting sheep's eyes at a pretty girl. Well, that doesn't prevent me from knowing she's hiding something. Whatever can it be? I've got an idea, but I need proof. Would this interest you? I don't know. 
Looks like a tuft of hair. The dogs? I don't think so. It's too coarse. But what do you make of this? Oh, it looks like a scrap torn from a muffler. That's what I made of it. Who do you suppose? That my pet is for you to find out. Do you mean to say that I've got to steal every woolen scarf in the neighborhood? And without anyone catching you at it. A fine detective you're making me. Turning me into the thief. Good work, Walton. I wasn't aware that you were being watched. You did a very thorough job, Walton. You needn't look so guilty, you know. You'd make a very poor accomplice. Accomplice? Come now, out of it. What are you burning? Waste paper. We always burn it. In this room? Uh-uh, that won't do. You went out of your way to burn something that you wanted to get rid of. You chose this room because you thought you wouldn't be seen. Yes. It wasn't waste paper at all, was it, Walton? No, sir. It was something you didn't want me to find because you thought it might incriminate you. That's not true, sir. It was... I'm sorry, sir, but I can't say it. You realize this puts you in a very serious position. Walton, I'm sure that you've given long years of service to the Hammonds. I know that you'd do anything in the world to help them. Why won't you let me help them? Mr. Curtis, leave Hammond Hall. Go back to London. Before it's too late. Too late? What are you keeping from me? There are some things that are beyond the understanding of us who live on this earth. You are not safe here. Miss Christopher's in danger, too. Won't you go back? I'm sorry, Walton, but we've a job to do here, and I mean to see it through. Very good, sir. No one can say I didn't warn you. about the monster. You surely didn't come here to say your prayers. I don't see as it's any of your business. You and Walton happen to be the only two members of the household beside Miss Hammond who were up and above when the attack occurred. Mr. Curtis, I don't know anything about the monster. I swear I don't. You'd better tell me what you're up to, Stradick. Oh, so that's what those ghost chains are all about. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Well, it'd be nice if you helped around a little bit once in a while. Wouldn't kill you. Is she? Yes, she's gone. 
body will have to remain here till the police complete their investigation. We better tell the others. Elka, what is it? Case dead. I did everything I could for her. She never regained consciousness. We'll have to make a report to the constable, Helga. There'll be an inquest, you know. Poor kid, why did it have to happen to her? I tried to save her from it. I battled with all my strength. Should have put up a better fight. You mustn't blame yourself, Oliver. I have the most awful premonition. I'm sure it will strike again. Let me advise the witnesses that they are under oath and that it is their duty to give the coroner's jury all facts pertaining to this case. Gentlemen of the jury, your verdict as to the cause of the death of the deceased, Kate O'Malley, is to decide the future course of action in this case by His Majesty's government. Your judgment will be guided by the testimony of the witnesses. And I wish to impress upon all witnesses that perjury in connection with an official coroner's inquest is punishable to the full extent of the law. In the event of the jury rendering a verdict of murder, any witness withholding vital information or giving false testimony will be regarded as an accessory to the crime. <clears throat> now, will you take the stand, please? Your name? Charlie Clagpole. The constable report states that you and your brother Tom were unlawfully setting traps when the fight in which you received a broken arm occurred. We was in the woods, all right. But we didn't kill Kate O'Malley. We was nowhere near her and Mr. Abbott. You've not been accused of that. Is it true that on several previous occasions you had words with Mr. Hammond? That's right. What about it? That will be all. Mr. Streddy, take the stand. Yes, sir. Did you see the Clagpools on the night of the crime? I suppose I did. Can't you be sure whether you did or not? Yes, I'm sure. What were you doing in the woods at that time? I was setting traps. Stradick. Oh, that's impossible. I'm sorry, sir. I needed the money, I did. But why didn't you tell us? I couldn't. I'd been gambling. I had to cover my losses somehow. I hid the chains in the chapel. Oh, dear. There go my lovely ghost chains. As the attending physician, then, you would say the cause of death was due to precisely what? Concussion of the brain and severe hemorrhage. May I ask the witness a question? Of course. If the witness has no objection. None at all. Dr. Covert, were there any contributing circumstances other than those you just mentioned? I don't know exactly what you mean. The deceased was in a comatose condition all the time prior to her death? Yes, she never regained consciousness. Could this have been caused by anything else besides a blow on the head? From a medical viewpoint, that's possible, but hardly probable. My examination... I'm not questioning the competence of your examination, Doctor. I want to know if Kate O'Malley had been drugged. Definitely not. Thank you, Doctor. That's all I wanted to know. Have you reached a verdict, gentlemen? Yes, sir. It is the opinion of this coroner's jury that Kate O'Malley died of injuries sustained during an attack by a person or persons unknown or by a large savage animal species unknown. There you are, Bob. That's the verdict that's always been given in these Hammond cases. What do you think? I think I'll be able to prove it's murder.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. What are we looking at, mate? I don't see it either. I don't know. Anyways, welcome back to the show. We are with Rascal, the most clever dog in the world, and his handler, Mr. Dane. And uh, we are watching The Undying Monster from 1942. Really quick on this film, I feel like I just watched an episode of Perry Mason. Because it's black and white? No, because they had this whole courtroom fiasco thing oh that's on. true no. that's true it well, was reminding i think you know anytime a film has a courtroom scene it's filler right they did they could not write they something so they said, all right let's have a court scene and that way they could do all the exposition and then they can have some i don't know I, you know if i want to see a court film i'm going to watch a court yeah, film let's get back to the monster the monster that's what we <laughs> want to see anyways we're going to get back and hopefully we're going to see a, a monster soon uh, I'm hanging out with this fine chap, though, at the moment. Tangela stepped away and put me in charge of the dog. You know, he's actually quite well behaved. He likes you. Well, you can tell. You guys no, I imagine match. he would be well behaved whether he liked me or not. And, you know, most, most animals do like me. Maybe he's terrified. No, my, no, my mother thought I was going to be like Dr. Doolittle. You know, she, she, she said I want to be a veterinarian. But, you know, it actually turned out I just wanted all the lollipops. So, anyways. Uh, so, uh, you were telling me during the break that he is going to be doing, or has done, and it's not complete yet. Yeah, some we're finishing kind of film. The Adventures of Skanky Doo. Skanky Doo. And it's Do. a live action uh, piece with talking animals shot in the most haunted parts of the Queen Mary and engine room used oh, for I've the Titanic. Been there. I've been there. And we've got, it's got all star. You know, cast people uh, loan their name for cameos like Cheech Marin and um, even some previous guests that you had, Kathy Garver. Oh, is Kathy a voice was of, in it. They have mermaids. I think we might have a picture of the mermaids. Uh, we've had mermaids on the show as well. Have you? Okay. Maybe I not love your mermaids, mermaids but we've, mermaids. we've had mermaids and Kathy Garver. We have not had Cheech Marin. Nice guy, yeah. Gotta yeah. get Cheech. You know, a, a show like this, we get Chong first. No. He's. Cheech, he's He's met Cheech and Chong. He has met Cheech and Chong. My yeah, goodness, they he's, love he's him. met more met famous people Chong. than me. He's met more. So this is something you've already filmed. And already it's shot still it, shooting, on the cutting yeah, room few, floor. A few more uh, pieces. It's going to be used for animal rescue funds, all the everything nice. raised. So shooting it, you know, not for profit. It's a really fun piece. And the fact that it's a ghost hunt, it's kind of loosely, you know, almost a parody of Scooby-Doo a little bit, but it's the adventures uh, of Skanky-Doo. And Skanky. animals actually talk. We have Cheetah the Chimp, the real one from the Tarzan movies, and he's still alive, believe it or not. No. He's the oldest primate alive. He's in Guinness Book oh World my Records. Goodness. How old is he? Wow, he's over 68. He must be getting close to 70 no, I something. watched that he show as a Palm child. Spring. It's the same monkey. And in Bedtime for Bonzo with Ronald Reagan, I think it's the same, same guy. My goodness. He really got around <laughs> Oh, the poor thing. He should be so, in like a home for primates, right? Yeah. No, he's being well taken care of. Oh, by, I have no doubt. His original but still, handle. He's living it up in Palm Springs. At some point, he gets to retire, right? Even he's a doing monkey great. needs to retire. I, I, I don't know. These these things confuse me. But it'll then, it'll be a scary little piece. There's ghost ghost cats, all kinds of little haunting things. And, and is it all scenes. animals, or is there any humans? Well, no, no, there's humans Garber. interacting with right. them, and it, the humans seem to be oblivious to the talking animals, but the Skanky Doo seems to see it all and sees and the he, ghost he that talks to him. And he portrays Skanky Doo. Skanky Doo. And, he's a, and you a, said he he's sees a crime it all. Sleuth. 
He sees the ghost cat. Oh. He falls well, off the Queen Mary and gets rescued by, uh, I shouldn't say too much, by live mermaids no. actually save him from underwater. We actually shot underwater with these two mermaids. It was oh my goodness. kind of a dream come true. I always love mermaids. So Never I know you did not throw this dog off the side of the ship. You'll, you'll have to watch it to see. But they made, they made a prototype. They made a, a stand-in. He did do his real swimming scenes. Oh, he did? Does he like water? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know if he was thrilled. No. <laughs> Right, maybe warm water like bath water. He was, he, he, he did, he, he liked it. No, he's good, he's good. All right, what do you say we uh, wrap up this film? I'm ready. All right, we're gonna I wrap wanna, up this film. I want to see this creature we, guy. When we come back, we're gonna find out what you're doing next and what he's doing next. So don't go away. Fun stuff happening soon. I promise. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. Curtis. We can't touch the body. What body? Kate O'Malley's. Those villagers are a superstitious lot. They're convinced that there's something supernatural about it and they won't budge. But I've got to get a blood specimen. Kate O'Malley's parents have a legal right to refuse permission for an autopsy. But perhaps Dr. Covert... No, no, not a chance. He ascribed death to normal conditions. Well, maybe it was a blind alley anyway. However, here's something that will interest you. Will you draw those blinds? Yes. We traced down a bit of cloth to a missing scarf. Oliver Hammond's. I have a hunch that Walton destroyed it. Walton? What? That's what we're going to find out. Now, what did I do with that bit of cloth? Well, here it is. Oh, yes. First, we take a sample of the thread. Then we incinerate it thus. Place it in this tube. Withdraw the air because the nitrogen and oxygen in air interferes with the desired light bands of the spectrum. Now we'll find out if this came from the same muffler that Walton destroyed. But if Walton destroyed... Science doesn't recognize total destruction. You can change the form of matter, but you can't actually destroy it. You see those thick groupings of lines at the left end? Mm -hmm. That indicates that the wool was dyed with one of the coal tar dyes of the Peromino complex. Do you mean it's an unusual sort of dye? Precisely. The phenylon dye is unstable and hard to handle. That's why its use is generally avoided. Actually, it's toxic, poisonous. Is that why you asked if that poor girl had been drugged? On the contrary, I'm positive this has no relationship with Kate O'Malley's condition. I'm only trying to prove that this bit of cloth was torn from Oliver's muffler. This contains a sample of the substance that Walton burned. They're identical. Then it was Oliver's muffler that Walton burned. Yes. I've seen that look of yours before, young man. I'm willing to wager that you've about got your man. I'm not convinced it is a man. A woman? Animal, vegetable, or mineral? It could have been. A wolf. Now, listen. There have been no wolves running wild in England since the Middle Ages. That's what stops me. But what do you make of this? I found this during my first investigation at the scene of the crime. Obviously, the hair of a large animal. A dog, perhaps. All right. Get the spectrum slide of wolf's hair out of my case while I mount this. That shows the spectrum analysis of wolf's hair. And here's the one I found. It's incredible. Well, Inspector, that blows up your spook theory. What's happened? I don't know. It was sealed in this tube in vacuum. It just couldn't vanish in vacuum. Where's the rest of it? That's gone too. It was here a moment ago. It seemed to disappear when the light struck it. Perhaps there are still some things in this world that science hasn't found out about. Gone to bed, Walton. Oh, yes, sir. Some time ago. Mr. Curtis come back from London yet? Uh, not yet, sir. Uh, Miss Christopher said he would arrive on the late train. Oh.
It's another bitter cold night, sir. Yes. You're not going out, sir. Why not? There's frost on the ground. Nonsense, Walton. I'm only going down to see if the gate's locked. Oh, but, sir... Stop worrying, Walton. I shan't go near the rocks. I've no wish to precipitate another tragedy. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Forgive me, old man, for breaking in this way. I had to make a blood test. There wasn't time to run down to my lab at Scotland Yard, so I took the liberty of availing myself of yours. Could have shot you. You could have, but you wouldn't. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you, Geddes? Sure enough of myself to know that the blood in this tube contains cobra venom extract. Really? That's interesting. Whose blood is it? Kate O'Malley's. What are you driving at? Quite a coincidence that this tube of yours should also contain cobra venom. And what can that prove? One of two things. Either you injected the cobra venom into Kate O'Malley's veins, or you deliberately withheld the information that venom was in the system at the coroner's inquest. There was no reason for mentioning it. it. Had no bearing on the case. She didn't die from the venom. But you did inject it into her veins. No. It could have gotten there through the scratches of whatever it was that clawed her. Possible. That's not only possible, but that's what happened. And you know what the monster is. 
Yes. You've known all along. Well, aren't you going to tell me? I can't. It's not my secret. Good heavens, man. There's been one murder. There's liable to be others. It came from the direction of Hammond Hall. You're too late, Doctor. God rest his soul. Amen. 
From a medical point of view, it was a rare case. You would hope to cure him, wasn't that it? I'd been working on the theory that the shock of the cobra venom would eventually straighten out the dreadful kink in his brain. Which he had inherited from his ancestors. Precisely. Didn't he suspect that he was a victim of lycanthropy? No, no. In cases like this, the patient was never known. He thought he had a nervous affliction. In the Middle Ages, they called such men werewolves, didn't they? No, Christy. No, no, she's quite right. You could put that in the report. It was a form of mania that caused his victim to imagine, consciously or subconsciously, that he was a werewolf. That book telling the history of the family had a hint in it. Oh, so you were the one who stole it. <laughs> yes, I'd hope to keep you from finding out. That their ancestors were balmy. Well, let us say, rather, that their ancestors handed it down from father to son throughout the ages. It appeared only in the men of the family, and only when the victim was out on a frosty night. They guarded the secret very carefully. But the butler knew about it. We know that now. That's why he burned Oliver's scarf. It had been torn to shreds by his dog. He was afraid we'd learn the truth, knowing that a faithful dog never attacks its own master. Oh. You know, Doctor, there were times when we were about to put the handcuffs on you. Yes. Yes, I had to take that risk. Well, I'll be running along now to see how Helga is. You have all the information you need? Thank you, Doctor. My report is complete. Goodbye. 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 Quite a fellow. Oh, my goodness. Now what? I just happened to think. I was sleeping in the next room the night that wolf man grabbed his sister. What if he grabbed me? Don't worry, Christy. Wolves will never bother you. You know, Dane, I, I need to buy myself a pair of these lenses. I think you should. No, I, you know, I, I cannot keep borrowing your pair, so I think I should invest. In any case, uh, this movie, uh, there was a surprise ending. It was an actual werewolf that was a member of the family. But did you see at the end, they just shot him with a regular bullet? I thought you had to have the, silver to kill a werewolf. That's a good point. No, that's, that's, that's the science, is you have to have a silver bullet. So I think, you know, maybe perhaps this policeman had... Uh, a special service revolver because they have to deal with these things maybe now the, and then. Yeah, maybe the gun was silver. No, no, no. I imagine the local magistrate would say to some of the police, you may w run into a werewolf one day, so make sure some of your Be bullets. Prepared. Right, right. Who knows? Anyways, not a bad film. We'll show it again one day. Who knows when? But uh, it was uh, nice to show something new for a change. And uh, you, what is going on next with you and this young lad? Well, we have another horror movie coming out that... He plays Flambeau, the gypsy's corpse nibbler in it, called Flambeau. The Curse of the Smoko Lantern. Smoko it's a, Lantern. It's a Halloween fairy tale, if you can imagine that. Oh, how wonderful. Well, we're kind of like a Halloween fairy tale. Yeah, it's ongoing. No, it's a no. wonderful fairy tale. She, she would be like the princess, mm -hmm. and Livingston would be the ogre. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's glaring at me right now, because I called him an ogre. No, he, he knows I fib. And uh, so w when's that coming out? Is that already filmed or you still that's, have to film? That's filmed. It's being edited. You know, right. and I, everything's been going on, slowed right. it down. But right. it, hopefully I'll be out by beginning of next year. Well, one would hope that they would have it completed by October. Would you not? You would, yeah, you would hope the right. Halloween fairy tale. Yeah, they're going to miss that But window. you know what? It could, it could be the nightmare before Christmas. Oh, right. Now, you know, I think that whole concept was because they were running late. It was going to be a Halloween strictly movie. <laughs> Good excuse. And they ran late and said, look, all we've got to do is put like a small Santa Claus inside mm -hmm. and change a few words no, here and there. It's a Christmas and that was movie. It, it's know? so cheery. All right. So if somebody wants to learn more about you and Rascal, where do we go? Oh, you can go to our website, www.theugliestdog.com. TheUgliestDog.com. TheUgliestDog.com. Right. You can also find him on Facebook and Instagram. Right, but definitely could find him on definitely the website. Definitely find him there, yeah. Right. TheUgliestDog.com. And we could see the D. schedule. We could see the itinerary of things. We can see his world tour coming up. That's right. right? We'll, see what, we'll see what Rascal's up to. Rascal does Moscow. Right. I'd like to see that on this website. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dane, for coming on the show and thank you so much bringing your little friends. And uh, next time you're in town, we're going to definitely have you back. And next time we do Tell a Zombie, 
That would be wonderful. We're it was gonna, so good spending time with you and Tangela. We're going to bring you both thank back. Thank you, Vincent. You're very welcome. As far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching the show. We know you could have been doing something fun, like you could have been at a disco tonight. You could have been actually dancing to 70s music in a disco, but no, instead you decide to hang out with us, and we appreciate that. And for that reason, I love you, Tangela loves you, and... Livingston merely tolerates you, but that's kind of the same thing as love. We'll see you next week. Different movie, different guests. Don't know who, don't know what, but it shall be fun. See you next time. So, uh, Dane, I, you know, I really like this dog. I think I should get one. What's your opinion? I don't know, Vincent. I don't think people could tell you apart. <laughs>